Oops, that's a big sound. Good morning. <laughs> um, well, we had an adventure, Cindy and I. Um, she had flown last Sunday, you might remember, had flown to Sacramento to see her son. And so then uh, after church, I drove up to Sacramento to um, pick Cindy up. Let's see. And from there, we went to Oregon and stayed with her family. Um, and um, then we went on to, um, <laughs> I need all the help I can get, Idaho. <laughs> and we stayed at, at, in Idaho where my um, family is. And we got to see them all. And then we uh, drove home. So we'd be here on Sunday. Uh, we decided to leave on on Friday to make sure that we didn't have a problem, but we did have a problem. <laughs> and so um, coming through the pass there, the Cajon Pass, um, we have to be careful for rabbits. Um, there's, there was a lot of people going down, and, and, and my car, which had been having trouble all the way since um, Idaho, um, stopped. And so we were stuck up there for a long time. Um, and um, we finally um, got a, a, a tow truck driver, and um, we finally, they, the AAA took our car home, and we went with them, and we, oh, they're, they're not supposed to do that, so don't mention that. And so um, at f 2 or 3 in the morning, we got home. And uh, yeah, they're they're running together, so um, yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank God that we got to see all of those people and that we got to um, survive. Yeah. <clears throat> The um, Matthew 6.33 says, Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. And that's what we want to do today. Um, <clears throat> the kingdom of peace. <clears throat> Are there bulletins? <clears throat> There's a theme that is sweet to my memory. There's a joy that I cannot express. There's a treasure that gladdens my being, tis the kingdom of God's righteousness, tis a kingdom of peace and it's reigning within, it shall ever increase with my soul, we possess it right here when he saves from all sin, and twill last while the ages shall roll. There's a scene of its grandness before there can be no end it's a joy it is peace it is glory in my heart how these riches do blend tis a kingdom of peace and it's reigning within it shall ever increase in my soul we possess it right here when he saves from all sin and will last while the ages shall roll
right here when he saves from all sin and for the last one the angel shall roll heavenly father we give thanks to be in your kingdom to worship you to remember what you've done for us to encourage us that we might be your people and do your will we are thankful in jesus name amen I will sing, I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. Sing, oh sing of my Redeemer with his blood he purchased me on the cross he concealed my pardon paid the debt and made me free i will tell the wondrous story in his boundless love and mercy he the ransom freely gave sing oh sing Redeemer, with his blood he purchased me. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt and made me free. I will sing of my Redeemer and his heavenly love to me. He from death to life hath brought me, Son of God with him to be. Well, welcome. Um, announcements? Pastor's family's on their way. <laughs> um, and um, we're thankful to be here together. Um, I think we're still doing the offering with the plate in the back. Um, are there any announcements that you know of? that we should know? Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Wednesday. <laughs> At 4 o'clock. You're all welcome. Uh, we're going to be um, heading on the other side towards the end of Matthew. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Any other announcements? If you're all good, I might let you out early. <clears throat> there is love that came for us humble to a sinner's cross broke my shame and sinfulness you rose again victorious faithfulness none can deny through the storm and through the fire there is truth that sets me free Jesus Christ is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of all. No be 
beginning and no end. You're my hope and my defense. You came to seek and save the lost. You paid it all upon the cross. You are stronger. You are stronger. Sin is broken. Have saved me. It is written. Christ is risen. Jesus, you are Lord of all. So let your name be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. So let your name be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. You are stronger, you are stronger, sin is broken, you have saved me, it is written, Christ is risen, Jesus you are Lord of This morning we're giving thanks to God and um, as a church we will pray together. Is there anyone having just got back? I might not have heard of things. Are there any things you would like to remind us to pray about? Well, then let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence here today. Thank you for the people that are our, our friends and part of our church who want to do your will. We pray for the pastor and his wife and family. As they return, we pray that they've had a, a great time knowing you and and working together with the family to to be there we give thanks to christian who stayed because uh i know i couldn't have got that machine back there to work and we're thankful for his being here and each of those around us we're glad to see them and to worship you together we pray that as we Look into the scriptures that we would perhaps find things that we hadn't found before or, or to be renewed or to know your will for our lives. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've got your pew Bible, you can uh, open it. We uh, we decided what the the, um, the scripture was going to be today, so as Cindy comes up, she'll help you find it, and we'll read the Old Testament first. So our Old Testament reading is Psalm 95, and it's on page 583. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 11. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above, above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The 
The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today you will hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as in rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me. They tried me, though they saw my work. For 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Testament is in Luke 15, and I'm going to be reading verses 11 through 32. It's a long one. It's a good story. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to, he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and was sent into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to, to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, 
Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the cat, fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and you, yet you have never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as a son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It is right that we would make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Christian is, um, can I use this? Can I use this for the podium? Yes. Okay. Well, we've heard the uh, story of the prodigal son. Um, and I'd like to kind of think about some of that uh, with us together. So... There must be someone that you know who is like the prodigal son. They've gotten so far away from the father that they're dead. They're lost. Perhaps they have never known the cleansing forgiveness and the joy that the Spirit of God gives to those who fully believe and experience him. Perhaps Someone has never known the power that God gives to those who love him to overcome the world. Or perhaps once they knew him and they knew joy and that joy and that power, but they've allowed the cares of the world to come in and to crowd God out of their life. Perhaps the things of the world are still getting glittering in their eyes. If so, the scripture warns that the end result is death. The ways of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal, abundant life. In ancient times, people used to dress up skeletons and skulls, and they would put gold and jewels in the skeletons. And, but however you dress up, a skeleton is still dead. If someone would pursue the things of the world and turn their back on God, the end result is death. But God is present here and loving, and his will is that we would come to him. If someone turns to him, he will run to you and embrace you like the father of the prodigal son, and put a, a ring on your finger and a fine robe and kill a fatted calf and rejoice in our fellowship. But the son that catches my attention this morning is the other son, the son who has been home with the father, out working in the field, who had all the father's possessions, 
all those possessions to him, to himself, and yet didn't realize what he had. He became angry when his brother came home and jealous of the attention and the rejoicing. It's this son that I can relate to, and I think most of us can relate to if we try. <clears throat> Not that we are angry or jealous of those who return to the Father. I gladly, gladly rejoice when someone returns to God, and I'm sure that you do too. But I believe that like the second son, we also don't know all of the riches of Christ's grace that we have available to us. And so we don't live in the joy of the Lord that we should live in. The second son said, I have been obedient to you, Father, and yet you never killed a fattened, a fattened calf for me. And the father said, my child, you've always been with me, and all that is mine is yours. In other words, if you haven't ever killed a fatted calf um, and rejoiced with your friends, it's because you have been a fool, right? All that I have is yours, and you are always with me. Now, I believe that that is what God is saying to most people today. He says, you are with me. I am with you. All that I have is yours. Why don't you claim it and make use of it? We all know people who have let money or prestige or football or sex or drugs or TV tubes um, and uh, things that take up the place of Christ in, our li in their lives. And you say, what a sad thing. That person has given up the eternal for something temporary. They've chosen to decorate a skeleton instead of building an eternal home in heaven. Now, it's, it's bad when things creep in and take the place of Christ. But it's no less tragic when good things take the place of Christ. In some people's life, the Bible or even church meetings could take the place of Christ. It's easy to believe that if we just read the Bible a little, a little a day, that everything is fine. Or if I go to church on Sunday, I'll be okay. But God wants us to be, fill, he wants to fill us with his presence. Our life should be a constant conversation and communion with God. I get a little bit concerned when I hear people say, I really sense God's presence here today. Because <laughs> um, I wonder, well, where was he um, before you came into this place? God is with us wherever we are. And we have the opportunity to, to know his presence um, and remind us of what we're here for and uh, the love that we have for others that God has given to us. But God doesn't live in churches, or maybe he's in the rafters. Um, the, one of the church I grew up in, uh, in Whittier, was, uh, was built a long time ago. I think it was uh, in the 1920s. And, and in Whittier, they were able to get a piece of land. And at that time, the hills were full of oil wells. And since you can only have so many oil wells to get that oil out. There was a lot of oil well wood that was available. And so the church took it and, and created rafters like this. But you can still go to there today, I think. I was there not very long ago, um, with the one rafter. And then it's, it's, it's braced in this way and then braced in that way. And for all, these, all those years, um, that church has been held together by those oil well rafters, uh, oil well derricks, I think, that hold up their church. Um, but God doesn't live in churches or rafters. Um, God doesn't live in the Vatican, uh, or at least not alone. Um, God doesn't um, live just in the Holy Land. He lives with us. God lives in the heart of the individuals. If Christ is here at church, it's because, in a sense, we bring him here. 
by the presence that we have of his presence. Um, it's a good feeling to see God doing things in our life and in the lives of others. That makes us glad and, it's, and joyful. But we must not get emotions confused with the presence of God. I've known people who get very emotional, uh, which is fine. Um, but sometimes it seems to be confused uh, with who God is and why they're worshiping him. If we only feel the presence of God when we are emotionally up, then we begin to question, where's God? When we are emotionally down, we think God's left us. If we confuse ecstasy or joyful feelings with God's presence, then we can't develop a mature relationship with God if that's the only time we think of God. The new Christian or immature Christian might be on fire for the Lord one day and confused or even depressed the next month. Questioning where God is. Where did he go? Um, but God is with us. Christianity is not a constant emotional high, but it is a confidence that nothing can separate us from the love and the presence of God. Sometimes people say, uh, pastors must spend a lot of time with the Lord. Well, of course, God is with us all the time. He's, he's in me, he's in you, and we are one with him. I don't have to close my eyes and kneel down to have a conversation with God. I'm alone with him whenever someone else is not with me. Uh, often I do not, I, I do get off alone and spend time in prayer with my eyes closed, but I don't have to have my eyes closed. We can talk to God. <laughs> you, you should be careful when you're driving, however. Um, but uh, when I drive or when I walk or run or shop, I do a lot of that. Um, I can be thinking about God. I don't have to make a, an appointment or a schedule, an hour of prayer once a week or something. The Christian life is one of understanding and enjoying God's constant presence. Once I told someone I was going to pray for them, and they said, are you going to go home and pray for me? Um, and I thought, no, I'm going to pray for you as soon as you walk away, and every time I remember to pray for you. When I talk with someone and they leave, I say, Lord, bless that person. Um, the abundant life is a continuous conversation with God. We are like the second son, the ungrateful son, when we forget that God dwells with us and his full power is available to us when we are in fellowship with him. When you meet someone, God tells you to love that person with his love. He doesn't say, try to love them with all of your might. He says, Love them with his love. You see, that's what God does. He sends his spirit with all the fruit of the spirit and with gifts for our use in order to bless other people. But it belongs to God. So when, we, when he says, help that person or feed that person or call that person and show them our love, or go to church and help, or help heal that person when he gives you the power to do it. God doesn't expect us to do things in our own strength, but in his strength. God wants us to live the abundant, victorious life that his son lived. Yes, we will have tribulations and difficulties and trials and temptations, But God is present all of those times. And when we die, we will die with the promise of eternal victory on our lips 
For to be absent from the body does not separate us from our Father or our Savior. You don't have to pray, God, give me strength or more love or more patience. You have the power of God in dwelling within us. If we have the Spirit of God, we have the power of God dwelling within us. You don't need more strength than God has or more love or more patience. We just need to learn to release the flow of love and strength and patience that God has put in us. God never commands us to do something that we can't, that we can't do. He says he will supply all of our needs. That doesn't mean that he will buy us a new car. It means that all of the power that you need to serve him is available to him. Do we want to serve God? Do we want to love our neighbor? God has given us the power. The ungrateful son said, Father, why didn't you even kill the fatted calf for me? Why didn't you ever kill the fatted calf for me? The father said, Son, all of the calves that I have are yours. Don't say, God, where are you? Why, why don't you give me the power to overcome temptation, to live as I should? Because all of that power is available. If we only believe. God has given us his spirit to live the life of Christ. He doesn't want us to waste our life down to things that control us. He wants us to be free to serve him. He wants to fill us with the fullness of God. If you're seeking more strength or love or patience or willpower or anything else, God hears your prayers. I'm praying that we will continue to grow in spiritual maturity, both inside and, uh, and helping others who, who can come here. So I'm praying that we will continue to grow in spiritual maturity and awareness of what God has for us. Heavenly Father, you know our needs and our sorrows and our burdens and our sicknesses. And we know your grace and goodness. And we give thanks for what Jesus did and what you do for us today so that we are saved by your grace. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. What a day that will be. What a day that will be when I can find the story. It's in the Bible. Hmm? Oh, okay. What's the uh, what's the page number? I don't think it's in that. There it is. All right, we can do this. <laughs>
shall come. No more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. When a day that will be, when my Jesus I see, I will look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I'll be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me from, my, from his grace. When he takes me by the hand, leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day, come the day that will be. Heavenly Father, thank you for the assurance that you've given us this day and that day that will be. We give thanks for having each other to worship you together and for the opportunities that you give us to, to be your people. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. You've been so good today that, um, you know, I'm a been a teacher for a long time. I'm going to give you a little time, extra time, and you can, you can go.